So page 100, section 1-3. Before we left to go to chapter 9 in the appendices, the last section that we did was 1-2. So we are coming back and picking up with section 1-3, page 100. All right, on page 100, there are six graphs that you need to know. Those should be graphs that you're already fairly familiar with, but just in case. Uh, the first one there that you'll see is a horizontal line, and they tell you that if you have the graph of a constant, that's always going to graph as a horizontal line. So like y is equal to c is the way they have it written there, but that would be like y equals 2 or y equals 7 or y equals negative 3. Every one of those is going to graph as a horizontal line. The second one they give me is f of x is equal to x or y is equal to x. So if you think about the ordered pair that would go along with that, if y equals x, like you put 1 in for x, you get 1 for y. You put 2 in for x, you get 2 for y. You put 3 in for x, you get 3 for y. So if you've got 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, you can see that line going through those points. It's basically just the diagonal line that runs from the third quadrant up through the first quadrant. All right, then the um, next one they give you is absolute value. And absolute value is a V shape, so that's really easy to remember. Value V. Absolute value is our V-shaped graph, value V. All right, then for the next one, they give us the square root function. And when we're talking about um, y is equal to the square root of x, like you can see it down here, here's y equals the square root of x. Um, the way that I remember that one is if I took off this tiny little you know, piece right here, if you looked at just the rest of the graph, it kind of has that same shape as what the graph does. So that's an easy way to kind of remember what that one looks like. Um, and then for E, the quadratic, hopefully by now we know what a parabola looks like and we know that those go with quadratics. And then for F, the cubic, that's that one that slides through at zero, kind of has a, an S shape. So those we should be fairly familiar with, but we do need to know those graphs on page 100 from memory. All right, so over on page 101, they talk to us about how we can shift a graph horizontally or vertically. And here's the easiest way that I know to remember this. Any value that is subtracted from x is going to cause a horizontal shift, and any value that's subtracted from y is going to cause a vertical shift. Now, we've actually already seen this this year although we may not have recognized it. Like when we did equations of circles, right? When we did equations of circles, they would give me something like x minus 2 squared plus y plus 3 squared is equal to 1. And the equation for a circle in standard form is right up here, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. So when we looked at that, we said, okay, my center is hk, so my center would be 2, negative 3, and my radius would be 1. And so we went over to 2, negative 3, and we made that a center. And then we went 1 in each direction, and we drew our circle. That was how we did that um, earlier in um, our textbook. If you'll notice, if you go back and look at that, 2 is the value that's being subtracted from x. And we said any value subtracted from x would cause a horizontal shift. So if you'll notice, if I start right here, Absolutely, I shifted horizontally too when I was going to that center down there. Same thing, we said that any value subtracted from y would cause a vertical shift. So if I'm looking at this and saying what was subtracted from y, that would have to be y minus a negative 3 to give me y plus 3. It's the same type of logic when we use that formula where we said you could think of that as minus or the opposite of. And we said it's kind of like thinking of the opposite of positive 3 was negative 3. You can do your shift as well that same way when you're saying what value is being subtracted from y. It's the opposite of that number that I see. It's a negative 3. y minus a negative 3 gives me y plus 3. So that would mean that I would have a vertical shift of negative 3. And sure enough, over here, we do have a vertical shift down 3. So what we were doing before where we were redrawing that circle instead of it being centered at 0, 0, it was centered at 2, 3. We horizontally shifted 2 and vertically shifted down 3 or a negative 3. That's exactly what they're telling me here. Any value subtracted from x will cause a horizontal shift and any value subtracted from y will cause a vertical shift. So over on um, the bottom of page 101, 
they go through and they break that down a little bit further. And they say, okay, first let's look at the vertical shifts, whether they go up or down. So for numbers one and two, if we have y is equal to f of x plus c. Now that c, if you wanted to, you could take that c and subtract it over to the other side. And then that would be y minus c is equal to f of x. Might be a little bit easier to see that way. That a positive c is being subtracted from y. So whatever is being subtracted from y is going to cause a vertical shift. So I have a positive c being subtracted from y. That's a vertical shift of a positive c. Now, if you think about vertically, typically positive we go up and negative we go down, right? So if I have a vertical shift of positive c, that's just going to be go up c units. And that's exactly what they tell me here, that if I see that equation, that's going to mean vertically shift c units up. All right, the next one that they give me is y equals f of x minus c. So if you take that uh, minus c and you add it to the other side, that'd be y plus c is equal to f of x. So if I'm looking at that and saying, okay, what's being subtracted from y? Well, it's like y minus a negative c or the opposite of positive c is negative c. So if I have a vertical shift of negative c, negative numbers go down. So that would be a vertical shift of c units down. For the next one, we've got y is equal to f of x minus c, and they've put that x minus c in parentheses, meaning that c is stuck to the x value. It can't be moved to the other side. It's grouped with the x. So if it's grouped with the x, then it's being subtracted from the x, So to, um, then that means that it is a horizontal shift. So any value being subtracted from x is a horizontal shift, so a positive c is being subtracted from x. So if you think about the horizontal axis, positive numbers go to the right and negative numbers go to the left, right? So same story here. I could look at this and say since this is a horizontal shift of a positive C, then that would be a horizontal shift C units to the right. And then this next one, same idea. You can see that X plus C is in parentheses. C is grouped with that X. It's stuck to that X. It can't be moved to the other side to be subtracted from the Y. So that means that it's a value being subtracted from X. It's a horizontal shift. And so I can say, okay, what's being subtracted from x? It's the opposite of that number. It would be a negative c, because this would be x minus a negative c to give me that x plus c. So if what's being subtracted from x is a negative c, that's a horizontal shift of negative c, and so negative numbers are going to go to the left. And that's exactly what this says. So you can memorize these four formulas and what they mean, but we literally can simplify that down to this statement that we talked about up here about value subtracted from x is a horizontal shift and value subtracted from y is a vertical shift. All right, look at example one. For example number one, it says compare each function with y is equal to the square root of x by graphing. So this is why we need to know those six graphs over on page 100 because that's one of the six that they um, want me to know. So if I know that y equals the square root of x looks like this, then I can go back and create an infinite number of graphs without plotting a single point. Uh, let me show you what I'm talking about. Our original function was y equals the square root of x. So what I want to do is I want to compare this new equation, and I'm specifically looking for what changed. And so you'll notice if the original was y equals square root of x, and now I've got y equals square root of x plus 1, that plus 1 is what changed. That's where I want my focus to be. So I want to think about what is that plus 1 causing. It's, it's going to cause either a horizontal shift or a vertical shift. So I need to think about is it being subtracted from x or is it being subtracted from y. Here's the easy way that you can tell. Can I subtract that 1 over to the other side? No, it's stuck to the x, right? It's grouped with it. Just like up here, these values were grouped with the x so they couldn't be moved to the other side. That's what it looks like in an equation. That thing is stuck underneath the radical. It's stuck to the x. I can't just subtract it over to the other side and group it with y. So that is a value being subtracted from x. That means it's going to cause a horizontal shift. So I can say, okay, I know I'm going to have a horizontal shift. What's the value being subtracted from x? Well, I can look at it and say, okay, it's the opposite of that number. If it's being subtracted from x, that would be x minus a negative 1. So that's a horizontal shift of a negative 1. So here's all I have to do. I'm going to take that graph as it looked originally, and I'm going to horizontally shift it a negative 1 and draw the exact same graph. 
it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just a sketch. But I could draw that graph if I knew what the original looked like and I understand the rules about shifting. I could draw that function without needing to plot a single point. All right, look at the next one. Same idea. For this one, they give me y is equal to the square root of x plus 1 again. Again, comparing to my original function, you can see the difference is this plus 1. But notice how this equation is written differently than this one was. Could I take that plus 1 and move it to the other side? Mm -hmm. Yes. So if it can be moved to the other side, then it is being grouped with the y. It is not being grouped with the x. So if I can move it to the other side, which this one I can, then it is being grouped with the y, not with the x, and it's going to cause a vertical shift. So let's go ahead and move that to the other side. I would subtract that 1 over to the other side, and I would have y minus 1 is equal to the square root of x. So then it's easy to see what's being subtracted from y. A positive 1, right. So that means that we're going to have a vertical shift of a positive 1. So I'm going to take that original function that I had over here. I'm going to come over here and vertically shift up 1 and then draw that exact same graph from that point. All right, look at the next one. For the next one, if I compare the equation that they give me to the original, there are two things that are different. I have a negative 2 and I have a positive 3 that have been added on that weren't there originally. All right, what's that negative 2 going to cause? Is it being grouped with x or y? <coughs> grouped with x, so that means it's going to cause what kind of shift? Horizontal. Horizontal. All right, how about this positive 3? Can I move it to the other side? Yeah, yeah so it's being grouped with y, y and it's going to cause what kind of shift? Vertical. Good. So I can go through then and say, okay, let's figure out our horizontal shift. What's being subtracted from x? 2, right. And then let's figure out our vertical shift. What's being subtracted from y? 3. Mm -hmm. So that just means that we'll start at the origin and we'll horizontally shift a positive 2 and vertically shift a positive 3. And then we will draw that exact same graph at that point. So think about the power of what we just got on this sheet of notes. Now, every single time I see a square root function that looks like this, they could go through and they could add 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, a million. They could subtract 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, a million from either x or y. That literally is an infinite number of graphs that I now know how to graph without plotting a single point. Because as we start moving into advanced mathematics, we have to do a lot of graphing, and I don't want to have to sit here and make an XY chart every time I need to do that. Then you expand that to think of those six graphs on page 100 that they told me to know. Not only could I do that for that square root function, I could do that for any one of those six graphs or any other graph that I happen to know what it looked like. I could just perform a horizontal or vertical shift and know what that graph looked like. So that's where we're going with this. All right, look at example two. For example number two, we go the opposite way. Example number two, instead of them giving me the equation and asking me to generate the graph, they give me the graph and ask me to come up with the equation. So example number two says, the graph shown in figure 1.24 um, are shifts of the original function f of x is equal to x squared. So let's come up with some equations, all right? So here's f of x is equal to x squared. It's one of those ones from page 100 that they'll expect us to know. So like on a test or a quiz, I wouldn't give you that original function. I wouldn't give you the original graph. I would expect you to know what that looked like, okay? So if I know what this graph looks like, then I can come over and compare b with the original. And I can look at it and say, okay, what changed? Well, this one has been vertically shifted down 3, right? So again, I'm going to compare the original with the new one and say, okay, the graphs are the same except for this one is down 3. That's a vertical shift of a negative 3. So I could say, okay, if I have a vertical shift of a negative 3, 
we said that any value subtracted from y was a vertical shift. So my original equation was y equals x squared. So there's my y equals x squared, but for that vertical shift, I need a negative 3 subtracted from y. Any value subtracted from y is a vertical shift. So if I had y equals x squared, any value subtracted from y is a negative 3. So I'm sorry, any value subtracted from y is a vertical shift, and we had a vertical shift of a negative 3. Now, you could simplify that a couple of different ways. y minus a negative 3 is y plus 3, and you would be perfectly welcome to leave it that way. y plus 3 equals x squared. Or if you'd rather solve for y equals, you could subtract that 3 over to the other side and have y equals x squared minus 3 if you'd rather it be in slope-intercept form. Well, not slope-intercept because it's not linear, but if you'd rather have y by itself. All right, look at the next one. If I compare this graph with the original, what's changed? Horizontal, horizontal shift. Good. Horizontal shift of what? Two. Positive 2. So if I have a horizontal shift of positive 2, that means I'm going to start with that exact same graph, y equals x squared, but that means that 2 is going to have to be subtracted from x, right? Horizontal shift of positive 2 means that 2 would have to be subtracted from x. Now this is the key. Remember we said for something to have a horizontal shift, it has to be stuck to the x so that it can't be moved to the other side, right? Have to use some kind of grouping symbols or something. So what I would need to do here to stick this to the x is I need to subtract that 2 inside the parentheses and then square it. If instead I wrote it this way, like if I wrote it with the x squared and then I just tacked on a minus 2, that 2 could be moved to the other side, right? That is not a horizontal shift. That's a vertical shift because that could be added over to the other side, and that would be grouped with a y. So again, we saw that on our first example that we did when it was a horizontal shift. It was underneath the radical stuck with the x, grouped with it. Same idea here, when I subtract 2, it is inside the parentheses being squared so that it is stuck to the x or grouped with the x so it can't be moved to the other side. All right, look at the next one. If we compare this next one to the original over here, what's changed? All right, so I have a horizontal shift of a negative 3. What else? Vertical shift of positive 1. So horizontal shift of negative 3 and vertical shift of positive 1. All right, so any value subtracted from y is a what? Vertical shift, right. So if I had a vertical shift of 1, then I need that to be subtracted from y. So I need y minus 1. Horizontal shift is any value subtracted from x, and you told me I had a horizontal shift of negative 3, so that means that I need x minus a negative 3. And again, I need to tack it to that x, group it with it so it can't be moved to the other side, so I put it inside those parentheses that are being squared. And then, of course, I could simplify that. So you could say uh, x minus a negative 3 is x plus 3. And if you wanted to leave it this way, you could. Or if you wanted to add that one back over to the other side, this is typically standard form for a parabola, so you might rather write it that way. All right, so here is our homework for tonight on page 106. Page 106, we're doing 3, 9, 11, 17, 21, 23. And on these, you'll notice that it tells you sketch the graph by hand. You're not throwing it in your calculator. You're not making an X, Y chart and doing all these precise points. You're doing exactly what we were doing today where you take the basic graph off of page 100 and you just horizontally or vertically shift it or both and then just sketch the new one. 